Thanks for joining me today. This is an update to the video on using a Google Form as a quiz. The older video in which we talked about the use of the add-on Flubberoo uh, has changed a little bit. Flubberoo has been updated within the last year and so I just wanted to update this video so that you could follow along and, and uh, get the most current up-to-date information. What we're talking about is how to use a Google Form which is normally used to quiz or gather responses or information in surveys. Um, we're going to use that as a quiz instead. So what you want to do is you want to be in your Google Drive account. Uh, we're at drive.google.com and go ahead and log in. And we're going to go to the new button and click on more and Google Forms. Now with the Google Form, uh, especially if you're a Google Apps for Education district, you can set up your forms so that you can automatically collect student usernames from their login and you can require that they're logged into their account before they take the quiz. This is good because it keeps some kids from taking a test for someone else and you can also only allow one person per login. Uh, that, that restricts them to taking the test only one time and uh, that, that kind of cuts down on them trying to take it over and over and over again. So that's the first setting that we'll set up. At the very top of the form, they give you a box that says Untitled Form. So we're going to go ahead and name this quiz number one. Of course, you can name that anything that you want to. And then they've already got one untitled question in here, so you can kind of see a sample layout of how, how a question looks. Um, I'm going to throw in a quick question here, and we'll say um, which of the following, whoops, spell it correctly. It is not on Mount Rushmore. And we will put in a couple of responses and we'll say George Washington, Teddy Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, and we'll throw in one more, Bill Clinton. Make it really easy for them, right? And of course, with a form, because it is originally set up to gather responses for surveys, it doesn't have a spot where you can select a correct answer. That's something that we'll set up later. And then you can click required question that makes them answer the question before, the, before they submit the quiz. And we click done. And then we're going to add one more in there, uh, just so we can have a couple of questions as a sample. Um, but if you click add item, it will always add a question exactly like the previous one, a multiple choice in this case. But if you click the drop down menu, you can see that you do have sec uh, selections to make. And you could always choose to do a multiple choice, or if you're doing short answer, um, you could do a paragraph text. Uh, if you wanted to just gather a short one or two word response, you could do a text question. And then you also have options like check boxes or choose from a list. You can also insert videos into your quiz if you want to so that you could prompt the students to watch a video and then answer um, an understanding, a check for understanding question about that video. But I'm going to choose a multiple choice and we'll throw one more question in here and we'll make it pretty simple again. Who was the 16th President of the United States? And of course I'm in a big hurry here so I'm not too worried about punctuation and grammar, forgive me. Um, and we will give the same responses up here to make it a little bit easier on us. And of course, if you already have a test that you've made in the past and it's already typed up in a Word document or something like that, you can cut and paste and let me show you what that looks like. We'll add one more question so you can see what that looks like. So let's say for instance I do have a quiz. I have one right here and I want to copy this question so I'm going to highlight and I'm going to use control C on my keyboard to copy that. And I'll go back to my quiz and it's going to be another multiple choice and I'll just hit control V to paste. Now then I'm going to copy all of these answers. Control C and go back and on the first on option one I'm going to hit control V and it automatically populates B, C, and D so I don't have to go back and forth and cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. So it's very quick, very easy and if you want to leave the A, B, C, D in there you can. If you don't, you don't have to. So I'm done with that question. So 
we are actually ready to administer our quiz if we want to. Now, a couple of things that you might want to know. Uh, up here at the top, one of the things that's changed in forms is that there is a change theme button. You can choose some preset themes if you want to. So we'll throw one up here really quick. And you can see what that looks like. Just kind of gives it a different look and feel. You can change it around any way you want. And you can also click customize and you can customize the header image or any of these options that you see over here. That's how it's going to look when the students take it online. And of course, all they need is a, a link. So we're gonna go up here to the top right and click on send form. And here we see that I have a link that I can share with my students. If I click short URL, I can take that address and write it on my chalkboard if I want to or on my whiteboard. Um, but if I want to, I can always just highlight and right click and copy that and paste it on a Google site. Or if I'm in Edmodo or some other learning management system, I could paste it there. So students can just click on the quiz and take it on whatever device they're using for my class. You also have the option to embed the form. And if you know anything about HTML code, you can copy this uh, bit of script and paste it into the HTML editor on your teacher page. So now that I have my quiz and my link, I can deploy it by just pushing it out there to my students and they can answer. But um, what we're going to want to do is set it up so that it can be graded. Now all responses are recorded in a spreadsheet. So first what we need to do is answer this quiz one time so that we can see what that looks like. So for me to take this quiz without having to hit the send form and then copy the link and paste it, I can always hit view live form. And here's what the quiz would look like to the students. So I can just go through and answer these and then hit submit. Okay, and it says my response has been recorded. So that gives us an idea of what one uh, submission would look like. Every form that you create has its own Google Sheet that's created to hold those answers. So if I click view responses, it will open that sheet and I can see here, there is my login, there are my answers, okay? And I can see uh, that it's working okay. So if I go back here and I go back to edit questions, I'm gonna turn off these features for just a second, um, allowing me to take the test more than one time. And I'm gonna go back in and answer these uh, wrong again okay and submit okay and I'm gonna do it one more time but this time uh, this is going to be my answer key now if you're if you're going to uh, do this I would suggest that you actually put a, a question at the top that asks for their name even though it automatically collects their name you'll want one so that whenever you do your answer key you can type the name key in there but we're gonna go ahead and do this real quick and answer these correctly and then hit submit. And the last one on my Google Sheet, the last recorded response should be the one with the correct answers. And here it is. Okay, so now we're at a point, let's say for instance, these are all of my kids in my class, which that's a small class, right? But these are all my kids, I'm done for the day and I'm ready to grade this assessment. To do that, I go to add-ons and I already have it on my add-on menu. I have the add-on called Flubberoo. If you don't have it, you can click Get Add-ons and you can do a search for Flubberoo. And of course, right here it says Manage for me because I already have it, but if, if it would normally say free, you just click free and accept their terms and it would add this add-on to your spreadsheet. Now, what this does is it allows you to set up a workflow so that it automatically grades assessments as they come in. I've enabled Flubberoo and I'm ready to get started. I click grade assignment and from here I can choose what each question in the form means. Um, the first one, the username identifies the student. These are questions, they're all worth one point apiece. But if I had some item on my form that I didn't want to record points for, I could always hit skip grading. And you can also change the points anywhere from one to five points if you want to. I hit continue. And then from here, I need to tell it which of these responses is my answer key. 
This was the last one I did, so I'm gonna check that one. But you can see here why it's important to have a slot on your form called name that they manually type in their name. And that helps you um, know if you type in key, for instance, which one is the answer key. I selected it, I hit continue, and it processes that information. It's grading my test now, and it's complete. So I close this box, and I can see that um, grades have been recorded for these students. Okay. Now, because I did it twice under my own username, it tells me it was submitted two times, and both times I got a zero because I answered everything wrong. Okay. Um, but if you had multiple submissions on this, let me show you what that might look like. Let me show you a different form. This form that I'm going to show you is from another teacher, and this was a test case that we did. And we can go in and hit Flubberoo, and we'll, we'll grade this one. And we'll set it up just like we did before. She actually had a name slot on hers, so both of these will identify the student. And for some reason, the questions got out of order on the sheet, but they're still in order on the form, and that's okay. We just tell it that these are questions that are worth one point each. And then we're going to tell it that um, this was the answer key. And because these were all separate uh, submissions, you see that there are two scores here. And of course, they answered them all wrong, too. But from here, what I'm trying to show you is that once you've finished and you've gathered answers on a quiz, you can then go into your form uh, menu on your sheet and you only get a form menu on a Google Sheet if it's a sheet associated with a Google form. So this is a, a different kind of menu that you would not normally see on a Google Sheet. But we're going to go to form and click show summary of responses and what this allows us to do is we can remediate and go back over the test with the students later and look at how many students, you know, by a breakdown, how many answered A, B, C, or D, and we can address those issues in class right away and possibly do a reteaching session before they take the final exam. So just a, a real neat feature in the form menu of a Google Sheet that collects your responses from a form. Well, hopefully this has given you some insight into how Flubberoo works to grade a form, and um, hopefully this is a, a good update to the previous video. If you have questions, always feel free to contact me, or you can pause and re-watch this video again. Thanks for joining me.